and welcome back to the Red Letter Being Challenge, where we have been challenging you to put the habits of Jesus into your life, to learn His rhythms of what He calls us to do in this world. And so you made it a long way so far, but we got just one more habit for you today. And so here we are in Florida, and this is what Florida looks like in the summer. It's pool and it's barbecue. And so today I'm grilling up some burgers, and I don't know if you have ever realized that burgers, I've been in many arguments with my friends, can be very controversial. In fact, they did a, a question the other, the other year, and they said, what's the best fast food burger in our nation? Like, you got a few bucks, we're not talking fast casual, we're not talking fancy, we're talking a few bucks, where are you going? And so lots of different answers across our nation. People out west are choosing the In-N-Out Burger. People in Texas are choosing the Water Burger. People up north are choosing the Culver's Butter Burger, which is kind of the one I would pick myself. What's crazy is nowhere on the top 10 list did you find the Big Mac or the Quarter Pounder of a Cheese or any McDonald's burgers at all. And the reason I think it's crazy is because when you look at revenue, McDonald's is far and away at top. In fact, in 2017, it outpaced Subway, Starbucks, and Burger King combined. So why is that? It's got to be because of their incredible customer service, right? <laughs> Except actually, according to the American Customer Satisfaction Index, they are the worst fast food chain. Actually, most business people believe that McDonald's is number one because of one word, consistency. You're gonna get the same burger if you go to a McDonald's in New Jersey, that you would in California, that you would across the world in London. It shows me that no, since nobody picked it and yet it's number one, it shows me that human beings are wired and crave consistency. And this really is what I believe the church, what it can do for you. I believe it can provide consistency. And this is also something that Jesus shows us in the Gospels. In fact, many different times it talks about how Jesus would go to the temple courts. Luke 21, 37 says every day Jesus went to the temple courts. And so every day Jesus gathered around people and, and, and presented the good news. So our church may look different than the day that, that Jesus lived, but in its beauty, and again, we're probably not gonna look the same Right? It's not necessarily a McDonald's franchise in the way our churches look because each of us is wired differently and so our churches can and should look different. But when church is at its best is when the people are gathering and the proclamation and announcement of the good news of Jesus is present. And I believe we need to hear that. We need to hear that. So here we are at the pool. And again, I'm remembering a year ago, uh, I was going to my neighborhood pool and we were, again, another Florida hot summer day, and we were excited to jump in the pool. And as we got there, the guy said, hey, you can't jump in the pool. I said, well, why not? He said, we just shocked the pool. Just shocked the pool. Apparently, it's something they do every week, and, and some of you know pools, you know, you put chlorine in a lot of the pools, and, and the chlorine, though, over the course of the week, it, it mixes with contaminants and pollutants and, and bodily fluids like sweat and pee. Because, you know, most of us pee in pools. At least that's what <laughs> Travel Zoo told us. 64% of Americans. Do you want to find out how honest your small group is as you're about to leave the red letter being challenged? You might ask that question to each other. See how real you get with one another. But apparently they need to shock this to get all of the bad stuff out so the pool can be what it was meant to be. And I believe this is a beautiful picture of the church. Because as the church, we are called to go out there on a mission and we're sent into the world. And this world is amazing but it's still filled with brokenness and messiness and, and sometimes really bad news. And if I'm not careful, all of that bad stuff, the pollutants and contaminants can come into my life and, and my body's kind of like that pool. I, I need to be shocked back into some good news and to be reminded of how good God is in the midst of all of this craziness that happens in our world. And that's exactly what happens when you choose church. Again, we may look different than what Jesus' church looked like. We may look different from what your church looks like. But when we get together and assemble around the good, unparalleled, undeserving, and I would say even shocking good news of Jesus, that is news I need to surround myself more and more with. To hear that Jesus came down into my mess and rescued me to hear the, the place that he went to, the cross, where he died on a cross for all of my sins. And to hear how he rose from the dead three days later so that as he rose, I now raise with him. What an incredible honor it is to be saved by the blood of Jesus. 
and his sacrifice for me is what compels me to want to be the greatest follower that I can be. Here's what's amazing about all of this. Many people believe in that good news, but far fewer are actually following Jesus in relationship. And that is the greatest opportunity we have to get to be in relationship with the God who's done all of this for us. So I hope over the last 40 days, as we've introduced you to these five, I believe, life-changing transformational habits, that they will do just that. They will change your life, they will transform you, and you'll go help change the world and give people a better picture of who Jesus Christ is. Thanks for being a part of Red Letter Being Challenged. God bless you all.